There's an activated Luminox. You know what that means. I was just on my way to the stand and I was still in the bush but I saw two does coming along the field. I thought there's no way, no way to shoot them through this thick cedar bush. Uh, but they started coming into the cedar bush so I just sat tight and the one walked right into an open shooting lane. So I either missed or it went clean through. We'll go have a look. Lots of hair. Lots of blood. Okay, guys. That's the first jump. Lots of blood. Another jump. <clears throat> There's my deer. So, 20 meters from where it was hit. My first, uh, first crossbow deer. How awesome is that? So, I was pretty, uh, excited when that deer started to walk into the bush for my open shooting lane and then I got real worried because I put the scope up and it was like looking through Jack Sparrow's telescope. It was all blurry and uh, oval shaped as if it had water on the lens or something. And I have no idea what that was but I lined up as best I could and took my shot another deer right here. So I was kind of yakking there and I just scared up another deer. I don't know if you heard it whistle on the camera, but I hope I didn't mess up my friend's hunt because <clears throat> I'm not that far from where he is. I'm going to stand. It might be a good evening. Last day of the muzzle loader season. So things are looking up.
We have to be careful because the uh, blade is sharp on both sides. So normally I could rent, leave the back of a steel blade against my finger, but I gotta keep a bit of space with this one. Oh, I even cut into a little bit of the sternum there. This part maybe would go easier with a little smaller piece of stone blade cutting around the, the anus. It's the part you want to be extra careful about, especially since this deer's already shot so clean sitting on clean snow. Jay, this knife is super sturdy, like I'm really reefing on it here. And uh, it's definitely holding up to the pressure. a little bit uh, dark to be doing that with a knife I'm not familiar with so I'm just gonna switch it up here just to be careful around the, the bung piece of string in my bag. It looks like it's getting pretty dark here so uh, I'll just explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the camera off. Um, so I'm using the stone knife. Um, I'm going to tie off the anus and then I'm going to loosen the membrane around it. It's going to pull through the inside cavity. I'm going to use the stone knife to open up the throat and cut the windpipe and then I'm going to open up the diaphragm and then I'm going to pull everything out onto the snow and then I'm ready to drag my deer. Okay, you should always have a bag with you if you're interested to harvest organ meats and on a fawn like this I am certainly interested to harvest the liver which is uh, undamaged here so we'll just do a visual inspection on it check for spots and things like that still using this stone knife now so I used the stone knife I cut the jugular the windpipe pulled that out um, I cut through the diaphragm um, it worked fine for that. There's a liver. No, no gall on it. I think the gall uh, must have detached somewhere. So that's going in. Now, I definitely want the heart. And the heart is also untouched by the arrow, I think. I think we're looking at a double lung shot here. Um, and I'm also interested, the heart is in a bag, a sack uh, of, 
um, tissue that's called the pericardium. And I read somewhere that people used to peel that sack off and tan it. There's also really great fat globules on here. So um, seems to be all the blood's pumped out of it. So I'm going to put that in my bag. Whew. And then there's more you can do that I might not really be quite prepared to do. Um, but one thing that I would like to do is peel off as much of this big um, fatty sack that surrounds the guts. It's also pretty much undamaged. So pull the guts out of it and all the fat's congealing uh, already. Deer fat just is uh, so quick to congeal. So I don't really know how well this is showing up on the camera. Um, but really there's just like this membrane. It looks like clear saran wrap with fat spider webs running through it. And you can collect that. And then what people would do with something like that is uh, wrap a roast in it maybe to uh, impart some fat. I think it's better on other animals that deer don't really have the best fat for this kind of thing, but here it is. Uh, see if I can open it up and catch it on the camera. There. You see how lacy that is? So I'm gonna wash that off later, but right now I'm just gonna ball it up. Oh, there's a parasitic worm in there. I'll have to look that up. I don't know what kind of worm that is. It looks like the um, Filiaris filarius, filarial worms that's in bear. Kind of looks just like a deer hair, but it was not a deer hair. So that goes in the bag. Heart. Kidney is next. Uh, where's the two kidneys? Right here. Kidney one, kidney two. And... They have a real nice ball of fat around them. You can't even see the kidney in there hardly. Just on the corner here. We'll throw that guy in there. And we'll throw this other one in here. I'm not going to do sausage with the intestines. I haven't really advanced to that point yet. Um, but I've got all those other organs. And this deer is now emptied out and ready to drag. See you back at the camp. Jeremy here on the One Wildcrafter channel and today we are looking at harvesting uh, deer organs from a small doe fawn and our best reference for that from what I've come across is this book Odd Bits by the author Jennifer McLagan and she is a pretty good authority on all the parts of the animal that are not the regular traditional meats. So we're going to go through a few things here including call fat, liver, kidneys, heart, and tongue. Okay, let's talk about this call fat first because this is the one that you already saw in the video where I harvested the deer and it's going to take the least amount of time for us to prepare. So when I'm prepared to use this call fat, I'm going to put it in some warm water to soften it up a little bit. And then when I open it up, it should still mostly have this membrane veil of interconnected fat. Um, so I'm going to freeze this as it is, but what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to pick off all of the hair and any leaf bits or other debris, and then I'm going to rinse this under water so it's nice and clean. 
Um, and then I'll just let it sit for a little bit to uh, just to dry off. Maybe I'll pat it dry with a paper towel and bag it up to freeze it. The way that I'll use this is <coughs> that I'll open it up and I'll wrap it around a, a drier cut of meat. So maybe my um, round roast uh, or my hip roast, which tend to be fairly lean. I could wrap this around that and that's going to help some of this fat to um, penetrate that roast. using cold water so that the fat doesn't melt. If you use hot water you might start to break this up but with the cold water it'll help it to uh, stay intact. Okay, and next up we're going to deal with this liver. So this is from this year's fawn, which is why I don't really have any qualms about eating this liver. Although on an older animal, I would probably avoid it. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, after having washed it is just um, inspecting it for spots or parasites. This one looks pretty good. And I want to trim away any of these um, membrane-y bits, <clears throat> the gristly parts, so those are going to get discarded. There's a few spots here. Oh, as soon as I start to use my video voice, the vultures start circling. Hey monkey, were you curious what I was doing? This is the liver from that little, um, Fondo, and I'm just trimming it up and I'm telling people about how they can take care of their liver. So I'm not going to use this right away, so I'm going to freeze it as is. However, if you are going to use it right away, the biggest, the biggest trick with liver is that it has a membrane over the outside of it, and a lot of people don't take it off, they just slice it and cook it. So the membrane shrinks more than the liver meat, and that means your liver curls around in a big C shape. If you don't want that to happen, then you should slip your knife underneath the membrane, and then you should peel it off carefully, um, and um, that will give you the best, the best liver for eating. So it's going to come off in little pieces. Um, you can peel that off with your thumbnail. Okay, so this one, I'm going to freeze. Okay, let's deal with the heart next. So, remove these two kidneys and this tongue aside, and we'll look at the heart. So the heart 
is here and it's got some fat on the outside of it but the heart is also inside of this bag um, this sack membrane sack that lines the outside of the heart and you can take that membrane off and it's the pericardium now if you're clever you can take this um, sack peel the fat off of it and you can actually make uh, you can preserve it as like a leather and you can make a little bag out of the heart bag which is pretty cool so I'm gonna do my best to trim off this fat without puncturing this which is actually a very strong material and I'll show you from earlier back in the season this is a pericardium that I took off of my bear that I harvested this year and all I did is I stuck it on the end of um, a plastic bottle which is why it's got a perfectly round shape to it just to dry it out and it's got some fat has basically um, oozed out of that material and I could probably scrape most of that fat away now and use a tanning solution to make a little leather bag out of this pericardium. So I'm going to do the same thing with my deer pericardium here and maybe I'll show you a craft in a future video. Okay, so this heart I'm also going to freeze. Now, I kept this one intact because I had the pericardium in it and I didn't want to deal with it in the dark. But usually, uh, what I would do with this when I'm still in the bush is put a knife uh, blade through one of the aorta and just slice the heart open. Whoops. And what that lets you do is just make sure that all the blood is drained out of the heart and that there are no big clots in there. You can see the heart's got this really nice amount of meat. So the important thing to do with the heart now is you want to trim away um, and this part's you know somewhat doable with your fingers but is gonna go faster but maybe less tidily with a knife you want to get rid of all this hard fat and you also want to get rid of all this tough rubbery um, tissue around the aortas so we're gonna trim this stuff out and then what we should be left with is mainly just the meat from the heart the muscle tissue and in a future video we'll cut that up um, if you don't cut the heart in half if you are to if you were to just um, leave it whole and trim it carefully then you could um, cut the top off of it and then you could stuff the inside of the heart and sew it up you could have a stuffed heart recipe um, which would be a good way to uh, cook with the heart as well because of course it's um, a muscle with some cavities inside of it so there's room to stuff some delicious breads and grains and spices inside of there so all this hard fat and the top rubbery part of the valves is just getting cut away there's a there's a bit of a blood clot there peeling off this fat and i think you probably get the main idea about how that all peels away i'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing um, but that's all you do just keep going around the edges and peeling off the fat and the gristle there if you open up the uh, valves you'll see these are the heart strings inside they're uh, pretty tough so because I've exposed them I might as well trim them out of here now 
and then they will be in my final product when I go to cook this guy up in the big wild year and if you haven't watched any of my videos before um, the big wild year is an eating and foraging experiment that Delphine and I are taking on we are eating only foraged foods for one full year um, and that starts January 1st 2019 and expect to see a lot of videos through that year we're going to be doing some uh, physical health measurements we're uh, doing blood testing and so on we're going to show you all the things that we eat um, in that year and how we are cooking and where we're cooking um, so this video is coming out in um, December so it'll just be right before the big wild year and shortly after that we'll be doing an update on what's in our freezer and our pantries that we've stored away over the summer and we'll be doing updates throughout the year as we're collecting new foods so there is most of the hearts out um, most of the um, gristle and fat is away from the outside and so I'm just going to bag this guy up and freeze it okay I got smart and I labeled it before I got the bag damp and juicy because it never the markers never work as well when you get the bags wet so it's a good idea to pre-label your bags there's that little fawn heart which is going to be a delicious signature dish I'm sure in the big wild year okay kidneys set this tongue aside so the kidneys inside um, you find two of them and they're virtually always surrounded by this thick layer of fat now on another animal this fat would be really valuable for um, pastry lard uh, or to render down for um, deep frying in um, in beef or pork lard I think what some people do even is they don't render it they just would grate this to make it uh, into little fine flakes and you would roll that directly into your pastry however this is a white-tailed deer and white-tailed deer fat is probably the least preferred fat of any animal that I know because it has such a high melting point point. I've talked about this in other videos and maybe you already know this um, but unless your venison is too hot to eat the fat is too cool to eat it's really um, thick and pasty and it has a not great flavor and texture when you're trying to eat it so with these kidneys I'm just peeling them uh, there's a little thin membrane mostly between the fat and the kidney and you can peel the fat away just with your fingers and then when you get to the middle of this kidney bean shape you can see the fat is attached there so I'm going to get my sharp knife and just slice that little bit of membrane that's holding it in place okay so there is one kidney next next kidney so what would I do with this fat that has no use well I asked you guys on my last deer butchering video how to um, butcher venison quarters into roasts and I got a few suggestions from people so I want to say thank you for sharing your ideas and your experiences um, so I might render this down and make a candle as uh, one person whoops suggested um, and I might also get lazy and use it just as bird suet so I might feed it to the birds in a feeder um, I could also make bait with it so I might do a wolf or a coyote hunt this winter I could just save up bags of 
all this kind of stuff in the freezer for bait um, or uh, use it as bait when fishing for catfish. So I have a few options. I haven't for sure decided what to do with it yet, um, but those are some of the suggestions that came from people commenting on the last deer butchering video. Okay, so I got this kidney peeled back to the connecting membrane. I'm just gonna slice through that. And there's my other kidney. So, two kidneys, put them in a bag. I was smart again, I labeled it first. Throw those in here and um, just, you can hear how how hard this fat is, right? It's That's some pretty solid, solid fat. So I'll set that aside for a little project. All right, here's the last guy here that we're gonna talk about today, and that's the tongue. So, um, I did not show how to remove the deer tongue from the deer, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, and the best way I can describe it is if you have the deer face down uh, and the jaws are lying here and the teeth are at this end, you basically cut along each jaw and you pull the tongue out from the bottom of the deer's chin. And then you cut it right, <clears throat> right at the back by the esophagus. So when you've got your tongue, uh, if you're not gonna use it fresh, you're gonna freeze it then just check for any bits of esophagus that are still attached and you can trim them away. This one's pretty clean. Um, I washed this tongue and see it has a bumpy texture there and a little bit smoother at the end. This is an excellent eating meat. Um, and regardless of what you plan to do with it afterwards, you have to poach it before you use it. And after you've poached it, you peel all of this bumpy skin off and then you're left with just the muscle underneath. And when you poach it, um, all this little fat part at the end or any other um, strange bits will also come away pretty easily. So this tongue here, uh, although I've maybe dirtied it up a little bit by handling it with my bloody hands, it's pretty much ready to freeze. And then all the other work in preparing it happens later. So that's uh, those are what I would consider the main and least adventurous organs on the deer. There are other organs that you can collect and use in cooking or otherwise. And maybe I'll cover those in another video another day. Um, but this is what I grabbed from the deer that I harvested this weekend. And I hope that was helpful for you. If you're a deer hunter, um, I encourage you to make the most of your animal in this way. And if you're not a deer hunter, hopefully it was educational and entertaining for you. And I'll see you on the next video.